All right, here we are in Amazon Web Services. And as you can see, I'm in the Identity and Access Management section, specifically under Identity Providers. So you can get here by going to Services, and then Identity and Access Management. And then after you select Identity and Access Management, head to Identity Providers. And the first thing we need to do is create an identity provider. So select Create. And we're going to choose the provider type. And as you can see, Amazon Web Services supports SAML and OpenID. This is going to be a SAML connector. And I'm going to call this very simply one login. And now I'm going to upload my metadata file, the one I just downloaded. And after doing so, I'm going to click Next Step in the bottom right hand corner and then Create. And now we've created our SAML provider. Next, head to Roles. And we're going to create our first role. And as you can see, I don't have any roles right now. In your organization, you probably have quite a few roles. I've left my roles blank just to keep this simple. So the first thing we're going to do is create a web SSO role. So what kind of access and what do we want our users to be able to do when they sign into AWS? So I'm going to create an EC2 full access role for my users signing in from one login. So click on create new role and I'm going to name it very simply EC2 and I'm going to select enter and I'm going to select identity provider access and then I'm going to choose Grant Web Single Sign-On or Web SSO access to SAML providers. Now, this is just access to the AWS Management Console. I want to make sure that's very clear. And then select that. As you can see, our SAML provider auto-populated. That's why we have to create our identity provider first so that we can create this role. And I'm going to click on Next. As you can see, here is our trust. It shows my account number, which I've blacked out, as well as where we're sending the SAML assertion to be inspected by Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next Step. And now we need to assign a policy. As I said at the beginning, I was creating an EC2 role. Now, you probably have different names that make a little bit more sense. You're probably not going to call it EC2 or EC2 full access. In any case, I'm going to type in EC2 in the filter, and I'm going to assign full access, and then click on next step. And I'm going to create my role. So we've created a web SSO role, and now we need to create an external role that connects your AWS instance with one login's AWS instance so that one login can pull entitlements. This is a secure connection, and you're going to create a policy so that the only thing that one login's AWS account can see inside your account is the account alias and the roles. So let's head on over to Policies. And before we create a policy, we're going to head back to the One Login Help Center, and we're going to grab the policy doc that we've already written to make it a lot easier for you. All right, here we are back in the One Login Help Center, and I'm going to select this fourth bullet point down, make that the fifth bullet point down, adding external roles to give One Login access to your AWS accounts. Go ahead and select that. And here is that policy doc I was just talking about. As you can see, the only action, or the only access we're allowing, is the ability to list account aliases and list roles. So go ahead and copy this policy. And now let's head back on over to Amazon Web Services and let's create this policy. All right, here we are back in your Amazon Web Services account and I'm going to select Create Policy. I'm going to select next, Create Your Own Policy. And now I'm going to paste that document, that text document into this policy document. And I'm going to give it a name and a description. 
And it obviously doesn't have to be quite so specific, but in any case, after you've added your policy name and description, click on Create Policy. Or if you'd like, you can even validate it to make sure that it was done correctly. So select Create Policy. And now that we've created our policy, we need to create our external role. So select Roles on the left-hand side. Now select Create New Role. Now the role name needs to be exactly how we have the external role name in one login. And if you recall, I called my external role name in one login, one login role. And I capitalized the O, L, and R, and there was no white spaces. You want to make sure it's exactly the same. Click on Next Step. Now we're going to select Role for Cross-Account Access because we've already created a Web SSO role. This is the option we're selecting. Provide access between your AWS account and a third-party AWS account. And this allows IAM users from a third-party AWS account to access this account and it enforces the use of an external ID. And that's the token that we generated go ahead and select that option. Now we need to enter the account ID for the AWS account and the external ID. So the AWS account ID for one login is located in that help article. So head on over to the one login help center, look at the same article and grab the account ID and paste it in here. For the external ID, head back on over to your one login account select the Configuration tab, and then copy the external ID. All right, as you can see, I've entered the one login AWS account ID, and I've entered the external ID from my one login instance. Now I'm going to click on Next Step. And now I need to attach the policy that we created previous to this role. I just entered EXT, which pulled up my external role policy. So I'm going to select the policy and then click on Next Step. Everything looks great, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Role. All right, our setup is nearly done. All I need to do is head on over to Identity Providers, select one login, and then copy the provider ARN. Now you want to make sure when you copy it, there aren't any white spaces. That will cause a problem. So I'm going to copy this without any white space. And I'm going to paste this into one login in the text box for provider ARN. This is so I know where to send the SAML assertion to, to create a session for my users in Amazon Web Services. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to create one more Web SSO role. And that's because I want you to see what it looks like when I click on the Amazon Web Services application and I see more than one role. If I just had one role to test with, I wouldn't be given a choice to select one role over the other role. And I want you to see how that looks. So I'm going to create one more Web SSO role and then I'm going to head on over to one login and continue my setup. All right, here we are back in one login, and as you can see, we have the list of SAML identity providers where we're going to enter the provider ARN from our Amazon Web Services account. Now, because this is a multi-account connector, I can enter multiple ARNs here, which is all of the identity providers in each Amazon Web Services account I have. So what I'm going to do is paste in my SAML provider ARN. Once again, make sure there's no white spaces, and I don't have any, so we're in good shape. And now I'm going to select Save. All right, after doing so, I'm going to head back to the Configuration tab. I'm going to enable the API. I'm going to head to the Provisioning tab. I'm going to refresh Entitlements, which will pull my entitlements from Amazon into my one login account. And then I'm going to go to the parameters tab 
and we're going to make sure that our entitlements have come in. So click on Roll. And as you can see, they have appeared. There's the extra one I just created, which once again was optional, and the one that we created together for EC2. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set these as defaults. Now you certainly don't have to set any role as a default. You can, of course, create rules, which are app-specific provisioning mappings, which is based off of criteria. Now remember earlier we changed this to Amazon Roles format, or rather it was set like that by default. And the format is like this, the account, bar, the role name. So select Save. Go ahead and select Save again, 